All right, welcome back to another Flexbox uh, CSS Grid video where I show you how to develop using CSS Flexbox and Grid Layout. I'm going to go over something that um, has come to my attention just in the last couple of days. Someone asked me a question and I, I've been thinking about this for a while because it, it comes up in my own work that I'm doing. And that is kind of a general philosophy of <coughs> responsive web design and what that means. So you've heard the term mobile first and that you should be designing and developing mobile first um, that doesn't always happen whenever you're handed a design from someone from a designer because they're looking at you know how can we design for larger screens because there's inherently more things to design for um, mobile can just be stacked and, and most people are okay with that um, these days it's changing a little bit but they're okay with it and so what is the best way to put together a website using some of these technologies like Flexbox and grid layout seeing that there are different implementations of those um, across different browser types and different browsers themselves so you know how Flexbox is implemented on Chrome is going to be different than on Safari or it's going to be different than on Internet Explorer uh, just because there is kind of a standard idea but there's not always the standard implementation uh, which is you know it's their prerogative but that's been a frustration for uh, web developers since the very beginning with Internet Explorer and Netscape and, and all those different browsers that came along so one of the things that I like to do philosophically is to look at the design that I've been given if I've been given a design and this is something I learned from Travis Nielsen at the Dev Tips channel uh, he works for he's a designer at Google now but he said what he likes to do is to just start with the HTML so look at your page go from the top to the bottom and look at the design and then begin to write HTML based on what you see so not based on the layout but write your HTML just based on what you see and then you can go back and you can make adjustments to uh, containers and things like that if you need to as you go along based on the layout that you see for larger screens but essentially what you're going to wind up with is you're going to wind up with the the website laid out top to bottom just like you see it and if if there are some reasons to rearrange these things and you can rearrange them in the HTML <clears throat> let's say you wanted this one above this one and there were no issues with actually rearranging these two things in the HTML you should just put this up here right you should just set it um, you know you should just set it up here oh. because if you can get away with rearranging things in the HTML then this is the most cross browser oh that's going to change things this is the most cross browser thing that you can do is to write HTML and have it you know output into a browser all of the browsers are going to read HTML essentially the same way uh, much more than they're going to be able to read Flexbox or CSS gray out, uh, grid layout and then output those things to the, to the user so this is this is going to be cross platform cross browser compatible and the beauty of HTML is that it's also responsive so you can see here nothing you know I don't have anything special going on except for the the images are responsive uh, but the text itself has always been responsive from the very beginning of HTML so we've always had responsive design it's just that we tend to go out and break it because we're trying to design for a big screen first and then because we have broken the responsiveness of the HTML then we gotta go back and fix the problem that we've created so now with media queries and responsive web design there's not really a reason uh, to begin to develop for large websites on large screens first you should start where it's natural in the HTML and then begin to design your responsive web design and then when you need to break it the responsiveness then you break it 
uh, media queries allow us to do that and I'll show you how to do that today so uh, just going through I have a container that you can't see but it's holding two items um, I'm gonna go back to the way that it was <coughs> excuse me I'm fighting a little cold so hopefully um, it won't be too bad uh, as I'm talking so we have two two groups essentially there's the image and then there's some text okay so those are inside of this uh, group container and then what I want to do is when I get to 800 pixels you know somewhere out in here I want to have one group here taking up 50 percent and one group here taking up 50 percent um, I have a max width on the container so the container is not going more than 1170 pixels and if it does then it stops growing and then instead I have a margin auto which centers it in the page it just makes this margin um, automatic so it gives you the same width on both sides obviously so what I want to do to add some responsive to the uh, responsiveness to this is that at 800 pixels I'm gonna start by using flexbox and I'm gonna show you how we can do it also with grid <coughs> <coughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a media query. So we say at media min width. I usually just take a general min width. Um, I'm not designing typically for different orientations or specific screen sizes or anything like that. Just kind of a general responsive web website, especially with a marketing website. So at the min width of 800 pixels, then what you want to do is make your container display flex and when it does that it should bring these two things side by side okay so that's really all that you have to do in order to make this um, to make these line up horizontally now what we can do uh, and you can see this is just the HTML implementation and then once we get to 800 then our display flex kicks in you can actually do this um, right from the start so if you say display flex <coughs> then it's going to make everything uh, side by side like that you see how we get that's not exactly what you want on an iPhone 5 screen so what you can do is there's a property built in that says flex direction and we can make that a column and that's going to give us exactly what we want which is the elements stacked on top of each other one of the things that I've found about this flex column property though is that on Safari it is not handled very well so if you have any sort of um, iPhone or iPad or Safari on the desktop it is not going to handle flex column very well that's in my experience um, that could have changed by now I'm not sure but I don't like to chance it that's one of those things I'm talking about which is I don't know how the, all the browsers are always going to handle it I don't always have up-to-date versions to be able to do every single browser. Um, I'm one guy working for a small department. Uh, I test major browsers and I look for bugs and this philosophy of doing HTML first and then breaking it as you go out works mostly across all the browsers. So your mobile websites, which is you know for us about 60% of traffic, they're all going to work as consistently as they can possibly be because most of the browsers are implementing HTML in a very standard way after 20 or 25 years of, of implementation of HTML. Flexbox is 5 to 10 years old but it's relatively new in terms of, of how it's being standardized across the browser platforms so there are still some things that you have to do with the uh, uh, prefixing them and, and that kind of stuff so it's it's not fully there in the same way that HTML is so you could use this flex direction column but to me the better thing to do is to take this away allow the HTML to do what it's gonna do which is what it's doing right now and then when you're ready to make that break then you make the break which for me is at 800 pixels 
Now this can also be done with um, this can also be done with grid. So what I'm going to do is just uh, comment out the flex. And I'm going to say display grid. You can see that we're back to our stacked. This is only what it looks like with the HTML, right? So we do grid, and then we choose how many columns uh, we want our grid to be. So I'm going to say grid, template, columns, and I'm just going to do the repeat function, um, which is two. So I'm going to repeat two times, and then how wide do you want each of those columns to be? I want them to be one uh, fraction. So they each take up. So it splits it into two columns, and each of those columns takes up whatever available space it is based on the calculation of the entire container. So that's how we get that, and we wind up with the same implementation as we get with Flexbox. So, but notice that it doesn't happen until 800 pixels. So here, we're not getting our columns. It doesn't kick in until here. Now you're going to need a Flexbox fallback for Internet Explorer. Uh, I love Grid. I'm a little hesitant about uh, uh, creating production websites uh, that use Grid as an, as an overarching structure. Uh, I use Grid within sections, so like this where um, I need you know some nice control over a portfolio or a product grid or something like that, a natural grid. Um, with repeating elements. Uh, grid works perfect. The Flexbox is easy to implement, but it becomes a lot more difficult when you have kind of a, a, a grid all over the place and you have things here and there um, because not everybody implements grid yet and we still have to develop for those browsers like IE11. <laughs> <coughs> then implementing the Flexbox fallback becomes a little bit more tricky uh, with some of those um, types of websites. But if it's just a straightforward grid, go ahead and use it. Flexbox is easy to get it to look like what you want it to look like um, with just repeating elements, regardless of how many repeating elements there are. Um, and Flexbox is responsive, so when the screen gets smaller, as you if you have flex wrap, then it will wrap those items onto the next line. So. Again, you could add this here. So if we comment that out, you could actually add the grid at the very beginning. So every single size gets that gets that layout. Or maybe what you want to do is you want to have the uh, two columns when you get there. But here, you just want to do one column. You can actually make that happen with grid um, to where each of these um, containers, I mean each of these items here that are part of the grid, each one takes up only one column. So your container essentially only has one column. That's what that means. And then you're taking up the full width of that column. And then once you get out here, then it goes to a two column structure. In fact, you could even, you don't even need that grid uh, declared right there. It just happens that that's what you're changing. Okay, you're changing the column structure at 800 pixels. Again, the problem with doing it this way is that now here you have to have some sort of uh, flexbox fallback. So you would need to add um, some sort of a, a width to each of these or a flex wrap or um, some different things in order to make these groups to be as wide as you need them to be. Not impossible, not difficult once you understand how to use a uh, fallback, but it's just extra code and it's extra code that has to be interpreted on the on the the mobile phone in order for it to work. And to me, the fact that not everything is implemented across the browser is exactly the same. It's a chance that you're just taking that you don't have to take, in, in my opinion. So I would rather remove that. 
allow HTML to do what it does, which is to stack things, especially block level elements like these divs. And then you can control the spacing and things like that uh, here with the margin instead of trying to control spacing uh, with a grid and then have to control spacing again with Flexbox. So um, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that makes sense to, to do um, as much HTML heavy lifting on the, um, on the mobile side as you can and stretch it as far as you can and when you just can't deal with it anymore when the HTML can't do what you want to and you know 100% wide blocks are just not what you want anymore then after that you go off and you break Gotta add that back in then you break the layout but don't break the layout first and then have to go back and add a bunch of junk into your mobile side that's going mobile second and that's thinking desktop first. Um, I think that your designs, and you'll find that they go quicker um, to implement and to develop because you're not having to to develop a bunch of extra code uh, for you know the for all of the different uh, viewport widths that you want. You only have smaller bits of code that you're having to do uh, as you go up, and your viewport width gets larger. So hopefully that makes sense. If um, if you have any questions. Please leave them in the uh, comments below. If you have any comments, leave the comments too. Do you like this? Do you think it's stupid? Is there a better way uh, for me to do that? I'm definitely open. This is just from my experience of the last year of implementing these on real web projects that are out there now online. Uh, what's the best philosophy of moving from a mobile site to uh, a desktop site with the same website using responsive web design and newer code technologies like Flexbox and CSS Grid Layout. Um, hopefully it helped you. If it did, share it with somebody. If you think it's stupid, share it with them anyway. And uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Brian with an I, Brian Hafferkamp. And uh, feel free to reach out to me there and, and let me know what you think. And um, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.